This is the Power Break Podcast number 032, titled, What's in Your Hand? Hi, I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to BobRubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. What's going on, Bob? How are you, buddy? Well, I'm doing well, JT. It's good to be back and recording again. And, yeah. Uh, you know, as everybody is noticing, the the different microphone that JT just sounds That's really right. radio. We, we finally made an investment <laughs> in ourselves for you uh, because we noticed that uh, the old JT microphone was very, very inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> I was not actually eating at the time we were recording. That's that right. was just a bad microphone. Yeah. But uh, hopefully this one should solve the problem. I hope so. It's a very nice microphone. If we When we start doing video, people will notice who the important person is <laughs> with the better mic. I've moved up. <laughs> well, let me bring a note here that uh, we ask folks to check out the Power Break podcast wherever you download podcasts, we always say. By, or by uh, my website, BobRubaker.com. But please subscribe, and, of course, that way you'll never miss an episode of our discussion podcast with JT and Bob and the interview podcast that we feature interesting stories of perseverance to encourage you to keep pressing on in the race of life. Yeah. That's what we say. But, uh, you know, I encourage everyone to just subscribe so they don't miss an episode. Yeah, and and keep the questions coming, too, folks. I really appreciate it. Uh, JT at BobRubaker.com, uh, and we will definitely be answering those in coming power breaks. So, yeah, just uh, just keep it going. We appreciate it. Well, question for you. Have you ever uh, been given multiple excuses by people? <laughs> as, as a supervisor at a police department, what do you think the answer is to that? Um, yeah, you know... Uh, Excuses are, uh, well, I'm not going to get into that yeah. particular thing. Yeah. Well, um, but, you know, it, a lot of it is um, we just don't really believe that what we have to offer is going to make any difference, right? So, yeah. it, so it puts us into that um, category of, eh, that doesn't matter because I'm not going to make any difference anyway, right? Yeah, some people even say, well, I just don't have any talent or gifts or I would. Oh, believe me, if this guy who is perfectly talentless can get up there and um on stage and fake his way through stuff every sunday then you don't it's... fake your way through. I, know, <laughs> I know better than that and uh, the folks at home know better than yeah, that too James. that's probably true um but yeah you know there's a, a simple fact is you can always make an excuse not to do what's right it's because yeah. it's the easier path right and it's, the, and it's all all excuses are lame excuses they are for They're sure like buttermilk in the fridge <laughs> buttermilk in the, that is the best <laughs> excuse ever i remember there was a guy that actually worked for me and you know why he told me that he was late it was one of the best excuses ever he was taking the garbage out <laughs> i was like what he goes oh, i was taking the garbage out i'm like How's that going to make you late? He goes, well, you know, I live in an apartment and I have to take the garbage, you know, to the actual garbage um, dumpster, or dumpster, the receptacle. But so I threw it on the hood of my car, you know, and I drove it over there and I'm like, well, that's pretty smart. And he goes, yeah, but it kept falling off. And I'm like, how many times did it fall off? This thing fell off like five times. Probably would have been better just to walk it over there. I was going to say, after a while, you get the message. But, he, but by the time he got done with all of his excuses, I was speechless. So if he was just trying to, like, make it to where I was so dumbfounded I didn't know what to say, he man, he was perfect. <laughs> How make, about you? Do people make excuses in the church? Oh, of course. What? You know? No. I, I heard the perfect answer. Of course, there was... I haven't said this. I haven't been brave enough to say it to anyone. But I heard this old preacher say this one time that uh, people gave excuses why they couldn't get involved and asked to teach a Sunday school or something. I could never do that. And and the answer was, you think if I had anybody with talent, I'd ask you? (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Wow. I wouldn't try that. uh... (laughs) And I I wouldn't go. I wouldn't fly very well as a pastor. But... Nevertheless, it happens all the time. You know, you ask for volunteers and people to give you that stare. Yeah. And you know, they're afraid to volunteer for anything because, and then they'll give that excuse. Well, I, I'm just not talented enough or I, 
um, I just don't have the means or whatever it is, you know, and that's all, yeah. all a bunch of excuses. And that's what we're talking about today. The point is we get stuck in the trap of life because we make excuses and forget about the words that were given to Moses, which we'll talk about now and imply to others. As God said to Moses, what's in your hand? Ah, yes. Yes. I'm so excited to get into that story. So let's keep talking about that as we turn towards your uh, Power Break blog that you that came out this week, uh, which is what's in your hand, as you said. Well, of course, as we too many times we make excuses or, you know, we, we make attempts excu- excuses to get out of things of serving God because we look down on the, the fact that we don't have uh, much to offer, we think, or we figure that's not much we have to offer. So we pull back and we fail to serve and the trap and the excuse is we just are not good enough. We don't have enough. We're not talented enough. So we need to just stop the music and turn to Exodus chapter 4. It's a great read as you see Moses being called by God to deliver the people of Israel from the Egyptian bondage. Moses begins by making excuses why he isn't the right person for the job and how he can't speak and how the people will not listen to him. Then God gets his attention with one sentence. He says this, what's in your hand? (laughs) <laughs> and Moses replies, a staff. And from that point on, in Exodus 4, you see God demonstrating his power to Moses through that very staff, the yeah. one thing that he did have. And the point is that God used what Moses had, not what he didn't have. So all of us can find things in other people we wish we had. And maybe we even think of how much good we could do if we just had the skills, the talent, the means of another person. But I believe God would say to us via this passage, uh, excuse me, what is in your hand? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that reminds me of, and I, you know, I wish this was a part of scripture that I, I, I'm just really not knowledge based, incredibly solid on, but who was the first judge, the real meek guy that had a deformed right hand? Was he the first judge? And I think you're talking about Ephraim. And no, one, one of the first judges. Yeah, one of the first judges. When he actually, really, he was chosen because he looked like he couldn't do anything. Mm. I mean, really. Um, so, but it turned out that he could do everything. Yeah. Well, if you stop and think about it, David was not a person that looked like a mighty warrior, was he? No, he was not. Very small, yeah. and he was turned down even as the when uh, Samuel was going to anoint the king of Israel. And the sons of Jesse, and the one that did not look like he should be was David. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Um, but the point is, everything we have is given to us by grace. And, of course, grace covers a lot. He says, by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of your own doing. It's a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So opportunities that come along our way are not by accident. Right. And so when we look at that, we say, well, where can I serve? Well, first of all, what do you have? Okay. You, first of all, everybody has, um, we may not have ability, but we have availability. How's <laughs> right. that? An old preacher right. said that. I like that. That's, uh, we'll mark that one down. Too many times we get the why can't mode of thinking and we look at other, what others have and even more what we don't have. So God's wake up call is just simple. Look at what you do have. And the example probably talk about this some more this today on the podcast, but remember when Jesus was going to feed um, the 5,000 and there was a little boy that had uh, uh, some bread and fish. Yeah. What do you have? When Jesus asked his disciples, what do you have? And they said, oh, we don't have enough to feed all these people. Yeah, yeah. And he said, what do you have? Okay. Well, it's so important for me to always remember, you know, that he is the head and we are the body as the church. Mm-hmm. Um and not everybody can be, you know, something glamorous like the heart, right? I mean, you need a small toe just like you need a big toe, right? And every part of the body is important. It's so important. And without every part, there is no balance there. Mm-hmm. So um, that's something I always joke around with people at church when they ask me, oh, you know, what? what is it that I can do? I'm like, man, you can be the big toe, little toe. You yeah. can be one of the fingers. I mean, there is every single thing when you go to church need somebody to tend to it. Yeah. Every and little and aspect. There are things of that, it. that you don't see that need people to tend, to tend to it. And the whole point about it, this is instead of looking back and saying, I don't have enough to do, or I don't have uh, any talent, or I don't have time, or I, I don't see the opportunity, look for where there is a need. 
ask about where there's a need yeah. and start to fill it. Yep. Okay. And, and God will give you grace or either say, eh, this is something I don't need to do. This is not me. But the point is availability. Yeah. Everybody has that. And when we talk about the, the small things in life, you know, we don't have much. There was a little scripture in Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 10 when the people were really downhearted about they had uh, come back from Babylonian captivity, the the children of Israel and Judah, and they came back and they were uh, rebuilding the temple. And the found, they poured the foundation and they built the foundation and it was much smaller than the temple that Solomon built. Right. And so they were kind of bad-mouthing. There were some who knew what that temple was like and they were very discouraged. So God sent a prophet by the name of Zechariah and he said this in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. Who's despised the day of small things? Hmm. In other words, why are you making light of something that may be small? Okay, who gives you that authority to do that? Right. And maybe that was a little wake-up call that we all need to say that, you know, I don't have much talent. I don't have much time. I don't have much ability. I don't have much finance. Th- well, what do you have? <laughs> right. And who gave you the the authority to despise what is small? Because yeah. it's small in your eyes, but in God's eyes, he takes a little and increases it. You know, that. That is the story of how I actually got into playing worship at my church. Um, uh, our former worship pastor, Matt Evans, awesome guy, throwing a shout out to him because, uh, man, you are missed, my friend. Um, he had two people leave the worship team uh, because there was a, a, a minor split in the church. So um, he was pretty desperate, you could tell. And he just came to me and he said, hey, listen, he goes, he goes, um, I heard you play guitar. <laughs> that was pretty much how it started. Um, so my excuse was I didn't have the time and, you know, I hadn't played a lot in a long time. You know, every once in a while I'd pick it up. And, of course, you know, I was I was a former rocker guy, you know, so I didn't know much about church music at the time. Um, and, he, you know, he just – God, A, put it on my heart, and, mm-hmm. B, God was the one who arranged that. Um, and see, I just, I, I just went along with what God was doing in my life. Very good. And at the very end, guess what? That has been one of the most rewarding parts of my walk with Christ is worship. So while I felt like it was an inconvenience at first, it ended up being one of the bigger benefits. And that is a great awesome. story. Gene. That is a great story. That's exactly what we're talking about. You know, what is in your hand? Well, in your hand happens to be a guitar. It does. So, yep. so he, it actually is, it is JT who is playing at the beginning and end of this podcast, by the way. Yeah, that's true. That that's true. Live. Yep. He, he recorded it. So, but, uh, you know, so here we go. JT uh, using what God had given to him, using the opportunity that God laid it before you. And that was the biggest thing. It was an opportunity. Yeah. It was laid out yeah. right before me. And looking back on it, that was such a critical part of what God was doing in our church and in my life. There's a gentleman in our church whose whose wife passed away several years ago, and he just and he was kind of forced into retirement, and um, he was wondering what God had for him. And I just encouraged him to just look at what he does and look at what he can op- offer other people, and look how God can use him. Basically, he collects people's throwaway computers, fixes them up, and, and helps people all around Pinellas County and beyond with refurbished computers awesome. and teaches them how to use it. It's amazing. That's he's pretty got a, awesome. He's got a really uh, big ministry too. Well, anyway, uh, the whole point is that instead of griping and complaining about what you don't have, um, remember what God has said. What is in your hand? And check out today's uh, or this week's uh, Power, Blake, Power Break blog at uh, bobrubaker.com and uh, and subscribe to the power break blog it comes out every monday there's a little room for um subscribing on the website bobbrewbaker.com yeah pretty awesome stuff so what else is going on bob anything new well i just want to take a moment here to talk about the god's power line of prayer it's interesting how important prayer is in life and yet people look at it as something that's just optional for a christian it really isn't But when you stop and think about it, how God uses prayer, that really it is God's sovereign means of carrying out what he's doing in the world and involving us. And so he calls on us to pray, even though he says he knows what we have need of before we even ask. He knows what we're even going to say before we ask. And yet he commands us to pray. 
He commends us to pray, as it says in Luke chapter 18, to pray and not to give up, to keep praying. And in Mark chapter 9, he tells his disciples that they are not only to pray, but also to fast and pray. So all these things are important. So what happens? Well, God is involved in our prayers to encouraging us to pray, to helping us to pray, and hearing us when we pray, and answering us when we pray. I called it God's Power Line of Prayer, and I wrote it in a book, and uh, you can find it at BobRebaker.com, along with all the books that I have available. Uh, uh, and this one is called God's Power Line of Prayer. By the way, I just received word from my editor for my new book on the Delighting on the Lord's Day, Making Sunday Special. And the second edit is finished, so we hope to get it published. Oh, so, nice. Good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. We're, we're rocking. Cruising right, right along, yeah. man. Cruising right along. Well, check out that and the sermon links also from the uh, sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church. It's all found at the website, bobrubaker.com. All right, so here we go in our time for What About This? That is the time on the podcast where we get to questions and answers. So if you have a question that you would like Bob to actually answer, or me, if you so desire. Just write um, to JT and say, Just remember, JT you can't hold me liable for half of what I say. Um, uh, but feel free to but submit your questions is. by email to JT at BobRubaker.com. That's right, JT at BobRubaker.com. And we'll get to answering those on an upcoming Power Break podcast. You have my word. You have any more comments about my new email, email address? address, man? <laughs> That's pretty cool. It JT is pretty cool. at BobRubaker.com. I guess we're going to have to get little cards for you to hand out. It's just so just weird send for me. your questions to JT. Because I feel like I've spent like my entire adult life saying Bob at BobRubaker.com. So it actually is pretty good. I, mean, I haven't messed it up yet. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> All By right. the way, JT stands for John Trebino. People, people <laughs> want to <does>. know, <laughs> who is this JT guy? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You know, only people who call me JT are people who are your friends. That's the funny part. Really? Yeah, but I like it. Well, okay. I like it. Um, all right. Here we go. Question number one. Let's talk more about the spiritual side of what's in your hand, as uh, God said to Moses. If a person is not serving, what should they first do? The question is, what's in your hand? What talents or gifts do you, do you have? And stop and look at the opportunities that God has set before you to serve him. And if you still can't find anything, ask someone. Ask your pastor. Ask a deacon or an elder. Just ask. You're looking for opportunities to serve. And then don't turn them down. Look for those opportunities, even menial type tasks, whatever you think might be menial, might be small. Just do it. Uh, let me just read to you from John chapter 5. Lifting up his eyes, he, seeing the crowd was uh, coming to, to him, Jesus said to Philip in John chapter 6, verses 5 through 13, he said, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? Now, he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, well, 200 denarii worth of bread would not go far enough uh, for each of them to get a, even a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, well, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, have the people sit down. And there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. And Jesus then took the loaves, when he had given thanks, distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as, they, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing be lost. So they gathered up 12, bas uh, 12 baskets and fr with fragments and the barley loaves left by those who had eaten. Now, the disciples thought they had nothing. Right. They couldn't solve this problem. But Jesus basically said to them, well, what's in your hand? What do you have? Right. Well, we have five barley loaves and two fish. But this is 5,000 men. There are probably women and children there. Probably the total I've heard uh, read that some people think it might have been closer to 20,000. Yeah. And if it's 5,000 or 20,000, really doesn't matter. Five loaves and two fish wouldn't go Either way, 5,000 5, <laughs> is impressive enough. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So what do you have? Well, here they, they had... They had five loaves and two fish, and basically they put it in the hands of Jesus. So what do you have? I have a little talent, or I have just a little time, 
I have a little money or I have, I don't see opportunities. This seems like such a small, menial task. Well, mm-hmm. then you put it in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ and offer it to him and let him multiply it. You know, I, I have a great story at my church that really emphasizes that. There's a guy who, um, really gracious guy, he's awesome in our kids' ministry, and he used to make these little rocks, and he'd make, an- well, well, he didn't make the rocks, I'm sorry, God did that. Well, he took the rocks, and he made little animals out of them, and he would paint them, and he would do all kinds of cool things with the rocks, and he would hand them out to children. Now, about a year and a half ago, I invited one of my friends from uh, from my uh, work to come to Easter service. Uh, and they came and they were like, Oh, the music was great. And da, 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 da. well, their son went into the worship or the kids zone ministry. And when I caught up with them two weeks later, I said, Hey, um, Hey, have you guys been able to hit a church or, and he said, you know something, my son has not stopped asking me when we were going to go back to your church. Cause he thought that little rock animal was the coolest thing ever. Wow. I mean, it, really, if you look at that, what's your talent? Well, my talent is making making rock animals. On on first glance, you'd be like, I don't know how I can apply that for God's glory. Mm-hmm. Well, this this guy does it. Wow. Yeah. That's good. And, and what an influence he's had in getting kids back to the ministry. It's awesome. That's great. Well, if you are serving, uh, let's talk about your focus then, your love. Um, to get that right, we need to talk about... Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is the good and acceptable and perfect. A sacrifice, not what you don't have, but whatever's in your hand. Just like the man with the Painting the rocks for children. Yeah. Yeah. Or the person who folds the bulletins. Yes. Yes. Or the person who is an usher or the person helping in the parking lot. Who shows up early to prepare the elements yeah. for um, communion. Communion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Any, every little bit is important. That is exactly right. There, it, there are no small or menial tasks in the kingdom of God. All right. Next question. From the mental standpoint, what if a person feels like all they have to offer is insignificant? So it's really on them as to why they're not offering it. Yeah. Because they feel it's insignificant. It's just it's insignificant. Well, the question I have in return, it's always good to answer a question with a question, right? <laughs> not when you're training police officers. It always ends up poorly, but go okay. ahead. Okay. <laughs> so the question I have when a person says uh, that they all they have to offer is insignificant what makes a talent, a gift, or an opportunity significant? Ah, uh, that is a great question. Of course. Yep. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, what do you have that you did not receive? Hmm. Okay. So is it insignificant if God laid it in your lap? Right. No, that makes it significant. Matter of fact, he says in James chapter 1, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, from the coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. When you go to the parable of the talents, and you're to use what has been given to you, the person right. with five and the person with two and then the person with one, each one was given according to his ability. Yep. Okay, so the person that had one, remember, he hid the talent. He hid it because he thought it was insignificant. Right. That's exactly right. And uh, he thought the master was unruly. Well... Of course, you don't understand what happens. So if you don't remember that, it's found in Matthew chapter 25. So the question is, what makes something significant or insignificant? If God has given it to you, it's significant. And God holds you responsible for what he considers significant. And he considers you significant enough that he would give you this opportunity Mm -hmm. or that gift. And so don't bury it like the man in the parable of the talents. That's right. Use it, multiply it, learn more how you can improve upon it and look for other opportunities. Right. Be the man who found that chest of gold in that field and say, and went and bought it. Yeah. Be that guy. Right. Um, 
You know, something that I would encourage people to do, and it, it kind of goes back to the first question we were talking about, is um, ask other people, if you're in a small group, what is it they perceive your gift is? Because I will tell you, Amy, my wife, she was shocked when people said hospitality. I wasn't, but mm -hmm. her perception of what her gift was was different. She wasn't putting a lot into it because she felt like, well, I'm not really that good at it. But everybody else was floored by her talent. In she it. sure is talented. Yeah, way. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times we mentally take ourselves out of knowing what our gift is and applying it because we don't think we're good at it when in reality everybody else sees that it's a gift from God and you don't. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to give a little plug here for JT that, that uh, you know, Matt might have stirred the pot by saying, I think you need to come and use your, your uh, skills in, on your guitar. But I really respect the fact that you t have taken that very seriously and have really sought to improve and how many times, I mean, we have this wonderful microphone for JT. I wish we could describe it for you, but <laughs> I don't really need to because you just listen to how different JT sounds it's today. Big, and, and, it's red. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, little things like that, that you record at home, you, you do many parts, you prepare and uh, you practice. And so that's taking the talent to a new level. That is uh, seeking to improve upon it. So that's a good point because if you feel like what you're doing is insignificant, Treat it as something significant because God has said it's significant enough that he called you to do it. And then se the second part is improve upon it. Make it yeah. the best that Own you can it. do. Own it. Absolutely. 100%. Yep. As we always say that excellence is not perfection. Nope. But excellence is giving your very best. Yes. It's 100% effort. Yeah. You know, I um, for, from the worship perspective, I... Uh, Every once in a while, I'll go on and I'll see what other churches are doing as far as worship. And um, one of my favorite bands, worship-wise, is North Point. Um, their worship team is awesome. They've they've really done some incredible things. And uh, I was watching one of their Easter services because we were planning on doing something with one of their songs for our Easter service. And man, I heard their guitarist do something that was just awful. You could tell he didn't have his volume pedal down, so he was messing around. And all of a sudden, right in the middle of a very crucial time, you're I mean, it was really bad. But you know something? <laughs> that doesn't make him a bad guitarist. It makes him like me. So it was actually encouraging to hear that this guy, who I I look up to, as far he as makes, his ability, he's human. He makes mistakes. He makes mistakes too. <laughs> so guess what? Just because you're, you know, you're not as good as you think you should be, or whatever, you know, that's not an excuse either. Yeah, right? right. Just give yeah. your best, and understand that even your mistakes are not. I mean, you're you're not offering God perfection. You're offering Him 100 percent effort. Yeah, that's it. that's it. All right, we are going to turn to the physical aspect. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's talk about the importance of physical testing. All right. So testing, nobody really likes to test. Uh, those times that we were out there doing those sprints and testing uh, on our bicycles. Yeah, it's genuinely awful sometimes. But, uh, you know, it gives you an opportunity to mark improvement. Your coach uses the data. And even if you self-coach, you can use that. Doctors use data to make assessments on our health. Hmm. hmm. I know a guy that had high cholesterol. <laughs> oh, yeah? Who's that guy? <laughs> Tell him I do, too. <laughs> or sipping on a scale or taking physical measurements. Assessment is needed to help make changes to correct the course and to meet the goal. So physically, we need it, and I'm sure that spiritually we, we do, because it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6, that he says, uh, he says examine yourself to see whether yes. you are in the faith. Yes. Okay, mark this down. Look it over. Check it out. And let's see if we can make some improvements. And then physically, we need it. Um, if you're going to make any kind of improvement health-wise, in physical training, whatever it is, making it, uh, assessments, doing testing is very important. Yeah. I, every good physical trainer that I've ever been involved with starts with a test. Yep. Wants to see where you are. So that way... We can be honest about the progress because if it's not working, you would like to try something different that is working, right? Mm -hmm. So, with, but without testing, you'll never know. 
That's right. Yep, you'll never know. Well, don't be afraid to test yourself or to have a coach or someone hold you accountable by your uh, by your testing. And, of course, uh, that applies to the physical, the mental, and, of, of course, the spiritual. Don't be afraid to test. So check out today's show notes at BobRebaker.com and click on the Power Break podcast. Today's show is number 032. And submit your questions by email to jt at bobrebaker.com and listen for Bob's answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. I want to step in here before we go to talk about my little book called Running to Win. I took uh, the finishing at the Ironman Triathlon World Championship in Hawaii and applied that to Hebrews chapter 12 and gave some application to how you can uh, win at the race of life and applied how finishing a triathlon and encouraging others in the race is something that we do here at the Power Break Ministries. And, of course, we encourage you to uh, do as well. And the book is called Running to Win. You'll find it at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the books, scroll through, and find it. Uh, actually, a picture of me finishing the, the uh, Iron Man in Lake Placid, New York. Oh, uh, out right there on the cover. But anyway, uh, Running to Win is the name of the book. Check it out at BobBrewBaker.com. And thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast. And check out notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobRebaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.